Welcome to The Unrealist. This is Chris. In this video, I'll show you how to create a realistic television glow effect, where the glow from the TV actually contributes in real time to the lighting of the environment. You can see the final effect in action in the video that's running now. Let's go ahead and dive in. Here you can see the simple scene I've put together for us to work within. I want to point out one feature before we start. I've added a special light that I've labeled work light to the environment, just to make it a little easier for us to see what we're doing. But if we open the level blueprint, you'll see that as soon as playback begins, we turn off that light so that we get the true representation of the lighting in our scene. To see that in action, I'll play our scene, and you can see that it got much darker. The only lighting we have in the scene is coming from this single lamp, and it's casting just a bit of light on the floor. The first thing we'll tackle is playing video on the television in our scene. So to get started, I'm going to go in the Movies folder that I had previously created in my Content folder. And I'm going to import a video file for us to work with. Epic recommends that the video files for your project be stored in a folder called Movies under the Content folder on the hard drive. I've already placed our video file there, so I just need to select it to finish the import. Now I'll go back to the root of our content folder. And video playback is handled by an asset called a media player. So we'll add one to our project by right-clicking on the content browser, going to the media section, and choosing media player. We're prompted with a dialog that asks us whether we'd like to play back audio, video, or both. We'll select both for this example. I'll click OK, and then give the media player asset a name. We'll just call it TV Media Player. You'll notice that once I finish naming the media player, two additional assets get created. The first is a media sound wave asset, which represents the audio track of our video. And the second is a media texture asset that represents the visuals of the video. To add the video into our scene, I just select both of those assets and drag them onto a surface of our model. You'll notice that when I did that, a new material is created. That material is what actually got assigned to the 3D model in the scene. If I play back our scene at this point, you'll notice that we really don't see anything different. Part of the reason is because we haven't told the video to actually play. We'll initiate playback from our level blueprint. I'll start by adding a new variable to the blueprint and I'll call it media player. We're going to set its type to a media player reference. And then we'll compile the blueprint for our change to take effect. You'll notice we can now set a default value for this variable. So we'll select our TV media player asset that we created earlier. To trigger playback, we'll add a reference to our media player variable to the blueprint. And then we'll drag off of that and select a open source node. We set the media source to the video file that we imported. And just connect that into our flow. Now if we start playback in our scene, you'll notice that we can hear the audio playing, so we know that the video is playing, but we don't see anything. That's because our video screen is fully in shadow. To fix that, we'll need to edit the video material that was auto-generated for us. With the material node selected, we're going to change the shading model to unlit. Then, instead of setting the output of our texture node to the base color of our material, we'll connect it up to the emissive color pin. Now if we view that in our scene, we hear the audio and we see the visuals that we expect. But you'll notice that they're still not affecting the lighting in our scene. I'm going to go ahead and delete the sound actor from our scene for the rest of the video, just so I don't have to talk over the audio. So to start building our TV glow effect, I'm going to grab a spotlight and add it to our scene. If we take a look at the details panel of this spotlight, 
you'll notice a section called light function. A light function is a special type of material that can be applied to a light and changes the way a light affects the environment. It's easiest if I just show this to you in action, so I'll create a new material and I'll call it LF for light function and TV. Let's open that for editing. And with the material node selected, the first thing I need to do is change the material domain to light function. Now you'll notice all pins were disabled except the emissive color pin. Whatever we send to this pin is going to affect the way the light looks. So from our content browser, we'll drag in our video texture and we'll connect that up to the emissive pin. Now let's apply that new light function material to our light. If we play our scene, you can see the effect in action. It looks a bit like a projector shining on the floor, but one thing you'll notice about it is it has no color information. That's because lighting functions can only affect the brightness of a light. They can't actually change its color. So since we want our glow effect to reflect the color of whatever's on screen, we need to come up with a way to work around that limitation. One thing that we can use to our advantage is the fact that texture nodes in Unreal Engine make it really easy to access the red, green, and blue color channels of our textures. With that in mind, what we'll do is actually create three different lights, a red light, a green light, and a blue light, and combine them to create a full color glow effect. Let's start by sending just the red color channel to our emissive color pin. And we'll select our light and then change its color to pure red. Now if we play our scene, we see just the red color channel displayed in just red lighting. So all we need to do is repeat that two more times to create our blue light and our green light. And I'll speed this up just a bit for you. With our three lights created, we now have to duplicate our light function material for the blue light and the green light. The only difference between these materials is which color channel is feeding the emissive pin. Now when we play our scene, you'll notice a full color image is recreated on the floor. That gets us closer, but obviously for a glow effect, we don't want that level of image detail to be lighting our room. So let's address that next. I'm going to start our scene in simulate mode so that when we're working with our materials, we get a live preview to work with. In our preview pane, I'm going to turn on real-time rendering so that we can see the effect of our changes as we work. Since we want our whole glow effect to only represent one color at a time, one approach we could try is to pick just the center point of the texture and use that color as the color of the glow. To try that out, we'll add a constant two vector node and we'll set both values of that vector to 0.5, which represents the center of our texture. And we'll feed that into the UVs pin. So now we've achieved a single color However, it has a tendency to flicker a little too aggressively. The other limitation of using the center point is sometimes the color in the center of the image does not represent the dominant color of the image overall. So we're gonna to have to try a different approach. 
What we want to do is try and average the color of the whole image. And one way we can do that, or at least come close, is using the Spiral Blur Texture node. Now one thing to note about this node is that it requires a texture object as its input, but what we've been using so far is a texture sample, which is a different type of object. So let's go ahead and add a new texture object node. And we'll set that to our TV media player texture. Now, once we connect that to the emissive color pin, you'll see right away we're starting to get a blurring effect that we can use. But we want a more severe blur that acts to average out the whole image. So we'll feed in a distance value of 0.5. So here we're much closer to achieving what would be an average color for the image. Now we just pick the center point of this by feeding in a UV of 0.5.5. And now we have something with much more appropriate changes in hue and brightness. The only thing left to do in this material is to limit it to just the red channel of the output. We can do that by using a component mask node. And the component mask node will turn off all channels except R for red and connect that to the emissive color. Now we just copy the exact same thing we created for our red material and do it in the green material and the blue material. Now we can see that the effect appears to be behaving like we want it to, but it's a little hard to judge since it's only shining on a small part of the room. So let's go ahead and rotate it and position it so that it looks like it's coming from the television. To make that a little easier, I'm going to nest two of the lights inside the third. Now we've got it positioned properly, but we need to increase the angle of the spotlight. So I'll select all the lights and change the outer cone angle to something pretty large. You'll notice that these lights are set to stationary. This effect would also work if we had them set to movable. But since they are set to stationary, we need to go ahead and build our lighting so that the shadows and the indirect light bounces are calculated. With our lighting build done, let's go ahead and simulate. And you can see the effect working properly, but it's way too subtle. So let's go ahead and crank up the intensity of our lights. We'll play again, and I'll go full screen so you can see it well. And this looks exactly like what we were going for. You can see the accuracy of the color reproduction, especially on the back wall. And that's it for our TV glow effect. I hope you find it useful, and if you use it in a project, I'd love to check out your work. If you have other suggestions for effects or other Unreal Engine topics you'd like to see covered in this channel, please leave them in the comments. Until next time, thanks for watching The Unrealist.